So, um, there will be some pictures running around, and uh, what, what I would like to do with you now is to speak again about Nemo, but from a very uh, personal and intimate perspective, just to share with you what it is to live underwater. And I will go through three different uh, aspects. The night dive, which was an highlight, uh, our understanding of the underwater world, and what, it is to, what is the relationship that we develop with the module. So, the night dive is something that is not part of the mission. This is kindly organized by the, the, the mission team, just because I know that this is an awesome experience, and we were really grateful that they could organize this, because they had to work late for that. And just imagine yourself, you get out, out of the module, it's fully black, you are in the darkness, and then you turn around, and you see this module lighted with the, 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 the spots that you have outside, the, the light out of the window, and, and this ghost and phantomatic vision, like a sci-fi vision from, from the Abyss movie, you, you feel like uh, this is an alien spaceship that has just landed there. Then we are walking around, and after a while, we discover that there was some, some light, faint light uh, above us, we were changing its shape uh, regularly, and we were, we were thinking, what's that? Did, did they put a boat over there? Is there, is there any, any spot? And what we realized is that we were looking at the full moon through 25 meters of water. Uh, and this was an impressive feeling. Then uh, I recall that uh, we had some lamps, like, uh, like this one, and uh, these pocket lamps, when we open, uh, light it up, you have a kind of uh, light beam that, uh, that is uh, then becoming full of life inside. There were a lot of uh, tiny little planktons and animals that were dancing crazy inside the light beam. And it was like, uh, like having a, a, a laser sword from, from the Star Wars. And uh, uh, the, the crazy thing is that when you switch it off, uh, and then you start to flap your hands, all these animals become bioluminescent. This was a plankton, and you are suddenly surrounded by thousands and thousands of fireflies, or, or a kind of a, a, a myriad of, of, of mini, mini stars that are just around you. So just, just to, to share this experience with you, this was awesome, this was out of this world, and, and this is something that uh, the, the Nemo crew members never forget. The third aspect is um, the under, understanding of the underwater world. So I have done plenty of dives, but what I realized that each time that we do a dive, we get a, sap, a snapshot of what's going on. So you dive somewhere at a certain point of time, you see something. You dive somewhere else, another time you see something else. And you don't get any understanding of what's going on. Or you think you understand, but you don't understand. So after spending some days and in the module, and at the beginning when you look outside at the window, you have the feeling that you are in an alien world because there are plenty of things going on that you have never seen, uh, and, and you don't really understand what's going on. But after some days, you realize something, you get an understanding uh, of what's going on, and you realize that uh, you have an underwater choreography. And, and the underwater world is ruled by a kind of policy which is applied by all the fish, and they do every day the same stuff at the same time. And when the small ones are playing with the plankton or chasing the plankton, the big one, they stay aside. They are there, but they don't bother them. Later on, it will be their time to go for chasing, and they follow exactly the same pattern. It's, it's repetitive. And, and when you understand that, even if there is no under, underwater communication between, between the fish, you understand that there is a kind of choreography that is, that is predefined and followed by every form of life underwater. So when you see that, you start to, to, to consider this, this underwater world and say, you think that they have no, of course, no understanding of what it is on, on surface what are our working con living conditions. But we have a very poor understanding of what is the, the living condition and, 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 and the way they interact each other underwater. And uh, the, the, the feeling was like, uh, we are not living on the same planet. I mean, we live on planet Earth, they live on planet ocean. And they have a completely, uh, we, th this, is, this is an alien world, but after a while we developed the feeling that this world, this is their universe, their world, and we were the alien in the world and we, are, we were not the guys in an alien world. And um, it was like if you were, we were a human being in an aquarium, and, and uh, we, we could see even some, some of the fish coming close to the window and, and peeping inside and looking what's going on, and, and, and we were really uh, becoming part of their world. So the, the, the third aspect is the special relationship that you develop with a module, and this is something very, very intimate and special. 
So this module is making a lot of noise. When you're on the wet porch, you hear bubbles, you hear uh, uh, valves, you hear pumps uh, starting and, and, and on. And uh, when you go on the other side of the module where it's basically um, the, 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 the way, the, the area where you sleep, it's quieter. But after a while, you discover that there is a permanent noise, a kind of small crackling noise. Uh, like, clack, 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 clack. You don't really know what it is. And we ask the technicians that were with us what's going on. And they say, yeah, this is the life of the module. Actually, outside, you have a coral reef that developed above, around the structure. And when the corals are sucking the plankton, uh, it creates this noise. So you, you, you have this, it's like if the module is alive. And something which was really surprising that we could feel change of pressure regularly. So in, in our ears, there was a kind of pulsating uh, variation of pressure that we could feel uh, like every three and five seconds, it was increasing, decreasing, increasing, and decreasing. The same, the same situation like you have when you, you land with a plane and suddenly uh, well, you, you, you have this feeling in your ears. And actually, what was it? It was the waves at the surface. When the weather changed on surface, the, the height of, of, of uh, water above us was increasing and decreasing, and this was uh, uh, impacting the pressure in the module. So w during the night or during the day, just by what you feel in your ears, you could understand if this is calm sea or if there were a lot of waves at the surface. In addition, the module is your cocoon to protect you from this outside world. So, but when we get out, we are always attached to an umbilical. And, 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 and like, you know, like babies attached to the umbilical of the mother. And, and when we came back, I mean, we, 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 feel, we felt like this module we belong to us because we are operating the module, but we felt like we were also belonging to the module. We, we, you start to think about after some days that the module is a kind of living being that is belonging to the mission. And, and, and even I would say that uh, we, we consider it at a certain point of time as, as a kind of uh, seven crew member. And uh, this intimate relationship with, your, with our mothership, I would say, that you, that you develop, each of the, of, of the crew members develop that, and, and uh, I can tell you, when we left the module, uh, we were all really sad. And really sad because we knew that there, this would be, there would be no other opportunity for us to go back inside. And that we were leaving someone who, I mean, it was like leaving a friend that you would never see again. So um, I just wanted to share uh, this with you. Uh, and there are other plenty of stuff that I could, could, could discuss also, like the, the change of, the, 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 the change of, of environment underwater, like uh, uh, you feel like there is a weather underwater. So uh, we were looking at the, at the outside envir environment, not like, oh, there is current, there is a bad visibility, uh, uh, there is bad light, and so on. But we were after a while thinking like, this is a weather. We, we didn't talk about current, but oh, it's windy outside. Oh, uh, the, it's cloudy. Oh, it's getting foggy now. So because you realize that there is also a kind of underwater weather, uh, that develops over there. So I, w I was, just to tell you that I was really uh, astonished and, 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 and amazed but by what you can, uh, through this kind of experience, what you can develop as an understanding of the underwater world. Uh, and yeah, if you have any questions, this is the time. Questions, anyone? Where, 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 where? Oh, Ian. So are there any new NEMO missions planned right now? Um, there might be one coming up okay, this year. They are always in the same time frame because of the weather or? No, it depends. It depends on the, the type of missions. Usually it's around one week, but it can go to uh, 15 days, 20 days. What kind of season I, I, I mean? It's usually in the summer uh, period because we, this is when the time where the, the, the weather is, is, is acceptable and uh, yeah, it's the, the, the temperature of the weather should be, should be good enough. It's around June and September, in this time frame, between June and September. No more questions? Yeah, please. 
uh, is it a NASA-run facility, or uh, who owns NEMO, and do other people besides astronauts go there? Yeah, it's owned by the International uh, University of Florida, uh, and it's rented by NASA for these kind of missions. Of course, there are other uh, people who have the opportunity to, to live inside and to work inside, uh, scientists, uh, eventually tourists. Uh, if you have some money to spend and you want to go there, you can do. And you have also students, students from the, the uh, uh, Florida uh, International University. Uh, they have the chance to do that. Great. Thank you very much. Welcome. <coughs>